this hour, not least because we had some breaking news earlier on about the RMT. Their members have rejected a pay deal. Anyway, the Trade Secretary has travelled to New Delhi today to revive talks on a free trade agreement between the UK and India. It was very controversial, this trade deal, and we're going to unpick why. Kemi Badenoch is aiming to strengthen ties between the two countries and will meet with Indian politicians and business leaders, while the negotiations are expected to focus on a deal to cut tariffs and open opportunities for the UK financial and legal services. They are due to last through the week on all the first formal round of talks since July. But we will all remember there was rather a lot attached to this deal, wasn't there? Because for a while there was even talk of something like basically like a freedom of movement deal being lobbed in with it when it came to Indian nationals. Joining me now is Sunil Sharma, who's the chief operating officer for the Conservative Friends of the Commonwealth. Sunil, thank you very much. Some people will be looking at this now and going, hang on a minute, is it true that Kemi Badenoch has decided that she's not going to talk about things like student visas in this deal? Because that appeared to be a red line for the Indians before, but I know a lot of Brits were thinking, well, we don't need a trade deal at all costs. Yeah, I, I don't think um, they'll be discussing about sort of freedom of movement between the two countries. I think geographically it makes no sense for both countries. I think strengthening ties on trade and trade alone, that, that, that in itself is you know, largely complex. I think that requires a lot, a lot of time. And it's, it's a great opportunity for India and us. And I hope they focus on that specific area. Um, you look at China in the last two and a bit years, there's such an opportunity for India to almost be that replacement for China. They're similar to us in that they are a democracy, um, also have a massive population, have the capacity to have these sort of you know, having incredible operations. We've seen Apple move a lot of their factories from China to India. So I, I hope that they focus, the focus is on trade as opposed to visas and um, uh, movement of, of people. And the reason why it's relevant is because this trade deal famously stalled not so long ago. And it is widely believed that one of the main sticking points on it was the fact that we supposedly anyway weren't prepared to offer them something like a free movement deal or certainly when it came to student visas, etc. But this is important, isn't it, I think, for the government to actually get something sorted here, to get this done, because they need a win, don't they? And actually a massive bumper trade deal with India would be that. Definitely. And, and to be honest, this should be a fairly easy win in some ways. Like I so said, we're both democracies. We're, we're both, uh, you know, there's so much shared history and values between the two countries. In Narendra Modi, you can see there's a massive move towards be, uh, towards being closer with the UK and, and, and the US and generally the West. For a long time, India's alliances have been more Soviet Union, Russia, and ours has been more towards Pakistan. So that there's always been that almost uh, subtle bit of rivalry between the two countries. There hasn't always been a very cohesive strategy. I would say right now, this is the best relationship the two countries have had maybe since India's independence, in particular when Boris Johnson who was fantastic in breaking down that barrier between the two countries. So it's a really good opportunity now for almost Rishi to take some of that credit and really uh, do a, a nice, easy trade deal. Because like I said, these are two countries that want to work closely together. So I don't perceive this as being too difficult. 